That's that's an he's, interesting he's... thing to wonder. Well, he's not a very good manager. <laughs> anyway, I didn't I didn't realize we were alive. <laughs> Hello. Apparently, we're live. I, I switched it over, but then I needed to pour more tea. Which happens to be right on my windowsill. Mm -hmm. Of course, I was, I was talking about uh, my, my wife's manager at work. Yes, yes, yes. yes. No, no, nothing directly connected to you. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, no, of course not. I love everyone I work with. They're wonderful. <laughs> if, so I imagine someday someone's going to be watching this and I just want them to know how much I love everyone hey, hey, listen, that I work it's with. It's not my fault, okay? It turned 8 o'clock and I turned things over, okay? You need to be watching the time. <laughs> I do actually love my company. That's the truth. I love yeah. my company. It's it's the best company. It's, it's better than the company I owned. So it's like the <laughs> best company I ever worked for. You know what I love? this show so welcome to game central junction everyone our gaming related discussion show as always i'm your host metal and joining me is my co-host marsupial gamer how you doing today hopefully feeling better from last time pretty good oh wonderful it's it's amazing like i i, I feel like how like how you feel is less of like if you think of like you how you feel being you know high or low on a, on a graph yeah. kind of moving forward in time how you actually feel isn't whether you're up here or down here. It's the slope. Yes. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's the trajectory. When you're kind of on the way down. Yeah. Yeah. I probably feel the same as I did like a week ago, but I feel wonderful because of how shitty I felt over the weekend. So yeah. Yeah. I'm doing great. <laughs> how are you? I I'm doing fine. I I've, I've gotten more sleep. I think I was sick too. And I, I normally don't notice because I don't show the general mm -hmm. symptoms of being sick unless it's like really, really bad and like my nose is just like running and stuff or I'm vomiting. Yeah. But like regular colds mm -hmm. and stuff, I don't even notice it until I try to exert myself. And then like, yeah, I'm yeah. probably sick. Uh, the last few days, I ended up sleeping like in and out. I, I think I slept 12 hours uh, the day before with like a break in between it was like yeah i'm probably sick than that but uh I'm, I'm feeling fine now i'm chipper i'm on my normal oh. sleep schedule very good mm -hmm. yeah I, I i feel like so last week on thursday i ended up like at the doctor's office like late you know waiting her peach's appointment was late and i ended up i bet that's where i caught this cold was probably at the doctor's office. like there weren't very many people there but I don't know, residual something. Who knows? This is the only thing I can think of is like where I was around more than like one person at a time. So it's just, yeah, probably serves me right for missing the show. <laughs> <laughs> the karma, I guess, you know? Yeah. At least in the way people oh. use the word now. Yeah. When are we getting a new Hitman game? That's a good question. I don't know. Um, I believe that is currently owned by the Embracer Group because it is under Eidos mm. Interactive, which was sold from Square Enix to Embracer. It probably means we're more likely to at least get a trial on it, but that'll be after Tomb Raider if the supposed game ever comes out. Uh, it, we, mm. we were never getting another one again while it was still under Square after the stupid live service one they made went under. Hmm. Um, does Embracer own Devolver Digital? I don't know. No. Hmm. I know they were uh, trying to get rid of Gearbox. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. But they couldn't find anyone to sell it to. Hmm. No, they own... Uh, yeah, they still own Gearbox and THQ Nordic, Crystal Dynamics... Yeah, the Crystal Dynamics is part of the whole um, Eidos interactive package. Eidos. Yeah. yeah. Dark Horse Media. Does Dark Horse Media own Dark Horse Comics? I don't know. I, I think Embracer owns hmm. some comic groups, and I think Dark Horse was one of the ones that they bought. Yeah. They, yeah. they own Dark Horse Media. Uh, I, I think we covered this a while back. 
Oh, really? I just don't remember exactly what it was. Hmm. They're based in Tucson. That's interesting. What we do, maybe, maybe not. They might be different. They maybe. Huh. That's I know they creative. bought some comic group. I just forget which one it was. Hmm. Yeah, no, they do like marketing and stuff. That's weird. Huh. All right. Never mind. Embr Embracer just owns a lot of stuff, and I can't keep track of everything they own. Yeah. Especially since... Yeah, for some reason... They were like, we're going to do stuff, and then they didn't. Like, a lot of stuff they own are still just mm -hmm. sitting on, and I get it. Especially games. It takes you two years to develop something, but you'd think we'd at least get some updates on some stuff. Yeah, I don't know what they're up to. I don't know why I get them confused with Devolver, but probably because I hate them both. <laughs> mm. I don't hate Devolver. Um, I don't particularly like the management, but they're still pretty loose with a lot of the stuff they own, so it, it, it still kind of goes down like the individual uh, company. Because they work with a lot of single-A uh, companies, and that those stuff tend to be good, right? Or uh, yeah. Devolver's also help publish a lot of indie games to make it onto um, console. But yeah, a lot mm. of their higher-end stuff, I, I don't really like the way they manage things. I just don't like how they said, fuck that guy to me on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that that's part of the management thing, right? Because their uh, public relations has yeah. a lot to do with how they manage things. And I, I don't particularly like their public relations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think I don't care. in the modern day, yeah. as a video game company, nobody likes me. And the public relations on Twitter. should be the most important part. Yeah, maybe even think. more so Sorry, than I, the I, game I still... being good. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, that's that's also why I'm not planning on buying um, uh, Cult of the Lamb anytime soon. Mm -hmm. that, that was their studio that that started the beef with me. Yeah, yeah. Which sadly, it's a fun game, but like, I don't blame you. Like, I, I'd be more likely to buy yeah. a shitty game that I'll have mild amounts of fun with if the company's actually nice to me. Yeah. Well, I I, I wasn't really planning on buying it anyway. I no. I, I don't really. I've never like, watched gameplay of it. I don't know if it's. Um, it's a mix it's... between a roguelike, uh, kind of like dungeon crawler, like Binding of Isaac style games, but also oh. a like sim game like a farming oh. sim type thing so you're building a cult and in mm -hmm. the cult area uh you do have like a farm basically right so like a farmville stardew valley type thing you have to build your crops you have to build uh like harvest things and keep your cult happy but while you're doing that you're mm -hmm. also running out to the dungeon which is like the the forest and stuff and you're you're doing these like hmm. almost diablo like tumbles and really? hack and slash things but it's very easy gameplay mm. they even had to make a hard mode because people were complaining it was too easy and the developers like well the the sim part was the most important part of the game that's why the dungeon part was inherently yeah. easy it's not a sweaty game but then they added a hard mode so people could get sweaty if they wanted to that's nice like it's uh, actually the type of game to... that you would probably enjoy because the sim part is the heavier part of it but it still gives you some action to do uh, but like again, yeah. I don't blame you because of the way they treated you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I, 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 I don't really care. I just, I, th I think it was funny more than anything else. Yeah. But like I said, I don't, I don't know. That doesn't. I mean, I just don't have time. You know, I, yeah. I've tried. You know, I've tried a lot of games that are, uh, you know, Stardew like. Mm -hmm. um recently like fey farm and yeah. um what was maybe it was fey farm I, I actually tried that out i gave it a decent shot and you know it wasn't bad it was just like uh more of the same it's just yeah so this i don't is know if i can more of the same um i, I just right. use that as like one of the examples of it being a farming sim e even the sim part isn't mm. like stardew valley but i i get that too mm. it's like I play all these other things. If it doesn't have, like, a really good hook to it, why would I rather play that over Stardew Valley when I can still play a game mm -hmm. that's being supported and new content is being added to it? Yeah. Well, what's what's hard about 
Stardew Valley like games is that you have to learn a whole new set of people and yep. their schedules and what they do and mm -hmm. then a whole new like tech tree some some variation of a tech tree of some sort and all that kind of stuff and it's like I just learn I, I I know all this stuff from heart you know by heart <laughs> and start with Stardew and and I hate that games are almost designed with the internet in mind these days like you could just go and look it right. up on a wiki and some people are like well the game's not designed that way it's like hey, listen if there are thousands of pieces of information you need to learn throughout the course of the game <laughs> it is designed for you to be able yeah. to just look it up on the wiki if i were to roll back to like the older like a harvest moon like friends of mineral town if i go to friends of mineral town there are only at mm -hmm. most hundreds of things not not even maybe hundreds like a hundred yeah. things i need to learn throughout the course of that game and i can learn all the important stuff in one years of the game cycle so by the second year i'm just i'm smooth sailing as long as i paid attention yeah you know that that's an now, easy game now, i i like i, I kind of got addicted for a while there and i've haven't played it in a while now mm -hmm. uh to uh pioneers of olive town mm -hmm. um and it's kind of it's very easy. There's there's not that much to learn. But the one thing that I constantly have to go to the wiki for is to figure out where all the fish are mm. that you have to get if you want to progress at some point. Like th that's the one thing I have to I I basically when I play at least when you get like midway through the game, I'll just bring up the the wiki page on the fish yeah. and just do it, do, you know, do it. Control F, like, okay, where's tuna? Where's, you know, stingrays? Where's this? Well, where's I, I that? Well, I think Stardew it's even like... suffers from this problem of there's just too much to learn in the game, and thankfully there is a mm. wiki because, luckily, I only have interest yeah. in ever dating one girl in the game. So there's only one set of people <coughs> whose schedules that I basically have memorized throughout the year, and that's Abigail and her family, right? Yeah. But, like, let's say you wanted well, to make friends with everybody, which eventually you kind of do, and everybody's schedule not only changes throughout the year, but they'll even change randomly, like, if it's raining or not, and there's no way mm -hmm. any person is going to memorize every single person's schedule in the game to be able to find where they are at any given point in time. You know what helps a lot with that? Yeah. Mods. <laughs> but you shouldn't need the, mods. Uh, you know, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Like, the vanilla yeah, version of the true. game is the version of the game you have to talk about. Because even mods are kind of a, the assumption that you have the internet to play. It's right? like a wiki. Like, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's true. Very true. So I, I use the uh, NPC map mod. Yeah. So that when you bring up the map, it shows exactly where everyone is. Um... I don't know if I could play again without that, frankly, because you're right. I, I, I was gonna, I was gonna say, uh, I thought you were gonna say memorizing people's favorite things. No, that's pretty um, easy. Um, yeah, because you only need to focus on a few people though. at a time, mm -hmm. right? And for mm -hmm. mostly everyone else that you're not focused on, like really getting friends fast, you could just use universal likes. Mm -hmm. And if somebody doesn't like a universal mm -hmm. like or favorite, you'll know quickly that that's the yeah. one thing that person doesn't like i, I think likes are pretty yeah. easy it's but schedules I, it's just way too much you, yeah. you, you like you, so, you kind of start some... to get an intuitive feel for it but you'll mm -hmm. still get tripped up like on a rainy day or or, or something you know yeah, true yeah most of the time most of the people stay inside on rainy days except for like sebastian and abigail right uh, they're, yeah they go out on rainy days. There, there's a few different people like um, Abigail will be in the library on most rainy days. Uh, there'll, there'll be a few people yeah. that go to the library, or there'll be people who hang out in the bar as soon as it's open in, like, the game room on a rainy day. As so you just have to kind of know. But a lot I of know. people do just stay in their rooms. Yeah. Penny hangs out outside the museum mm -hmm. on rainy days. She likes to watch the rain. But I thought that one of those two... Like, I thought Abigail sometimes would go and... Uh, like sing or play a musical instrument by the mountain lake when it rains. Sometimes, uh, maybe. I think she just does that. I think in maybe it's rainy day in the rains. fall because she she has maybe. different rainy day ones during different seasons, which is even more complicated than uh, the standard person. 
Um, yeah. Just like how, like, on Wednesdays, she goes to the graveyard because of her friend's grave is there, right? Right. Right. Um, but, yeah, I've, I, it's, it's funny because some of the favorites are very intuitive, mm -hmm. but some of them are strange. Like, Marnie. Marnie likes really, like, she likes diamonds and other jewels and stuff. I guess maybe because she's dating the mayor. Maybe yeah. she got some <laughs> high class taste or something. I don't know. I, I was trying to figure out what Marnie likes. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. exactly like, the thing, though. It's like it's hard enough in this one game that is already super popular that has multiplayer. So, you know, like if you want to play with other people, there's plenty of other people to play it with. Like odds are you have yeah. friends that have the game, right? Um, hmm. Which is even fine for mods because most mods on PC are client side. So you can even play with people without them having the mods right and yeah. one of yours experience might Some be superior them. to the other but if they don't want the mods they don't have to be bothered with it um, right. but like it's a very popular game there's already a lot to learn so why would I go and learn all of this shit in another game that people aren't playing at the same time right like and it's nothing against you guys I'm sure you developers that are making your Stardew Valley like game that have an mm -hmm. interesting hook to it like that one prehistoric one that is almost like a this weird cultish monster mystery right on this island i'm yeah. sure it's a great roots. game but it's I have uh, to... roots of pachia right yeah something like that um I'm, I'm sure it's a great game i'm sure you put a lot of development into it but now i'm gonna have to learn all of this stuff again while stardew valley that i already own is also constantly adding stuff and yeah. i've never been to the islands yet and i still need to go to the ginger island you know <laughs> yeah, and I think he added another island in this yeah. last patch. I haven't been to that yet, but oh my gosh, you've never been to Ginger Island? It's so no, fun. Because no, I, I told you, I've owned it on Steam, but I've never played it on Steam until recently. So the last time I played it was when it was on PS3, and I haven't touched it then, um, and I don't even think Ginger Island existed until the PS4 edition of the game. Hmm. Or if it did, it was yeah. still after I stopped playing it on PS3. There's I think it was added like two years ago. Yeah. Very recent. Um, Definitely after PS... Uh, oh, yeah. Or was it PS3? No, I, it was PS4 that I owned it. I don't think it was on PS3. But I owned it like right on the cusp of the PS4 coming out. So it was like 2014 or 15, whenever the... the around then, whenever the game came mm. out or, or was available. Yeah. That's when I played it. There was no Ginger Island at the time. I it was on PS3. No, it wasn't. It was PS4. I'm, I'm misremembering because it, it was like right when oh. the PS4 was coming out. Um, okay. So I, like, I was still playing stuff on the PS3 at the time that I had it on PS4. Uh, but still, mm -hmm. um, I Ginger Island wasn't a thing when I last played the game. That that was yeah. how long ago I played that's, it. Well, that's it. Was, that was very. That is very new. That, yeah. That was just in the last big pack. There's a lot of stuff that wasn't in the game when I last played it. Because I last played it, I think 2017 may have been the last time I played the game ever. Before recently. Mm -hmm. Right? And now there's new stuff. That I've never tried. Mm -hmm. And we're still trying to get the bundles done. Because we haven't played in a while. And you can't do any of that post stuff till the yeah. bundle's done. Is that true? Well, any of the well, yeah, island yeah, stuff. Because, like, there, there's some quality of life stuff and all that stuff. Because you have to... Added, but. Yeah. You have to fix uh, Willie's boat, mm -hmm. which I guess you can't do until after you fix the... Community, community center. center. Or right? if you go the, the quicker, the Joja Mart route, you can you can do that. But fuck Joja Mart. Yeah. I've never done that, yeah. ever. <laughs> it's Not the speedrun route, because it's the quickest way to, yeah. to do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, sorry for shows. I, I will answer. We your do question, have other things though, to talk uh, about, but you said you yeah. wanted to talk about your experiences with the newer stuff with Stardew last time. So, yeah, I kind of wanted to because it's mm -hmm. you know it's kind of a big deal. Um, I didn't know there was going to be a a new patch, but or a new yeah content yeah. update. But a couple years ago, I just I guess one point five came out a little longer. No, yeah, he announced one point six two years ago. So one point five has been out for like. Four years, I yeah. guess. Has it been that long? Jeez. I will answer Fitzgerald's question. The answer is Disney. <laughs> Which company management is dumber? The answer is always Disney. Disney has <laughs> more history of being dumber, too. Like, give Embracer Group some time before yeah. you do that. 
But hey, the yeah. fact that Iger won and they're not getting rid of the board and like the guy has not been able to do his like buyout of Disney yet, uh, it, which is probably never going to happen, then yeah, it's Disney. Dis- Disney mm. sinking itself into the fucking grave. Yeah. Okay, so uh, patch 1.5 was December 2020, so a little over three years ago. Just barely over three years ago. So yeah. Don't if obviously you haven't played since then. I, I understand why you haven't been to Ginger Island. Um, and I don't know anything about World of Darkness. I had to look it up. It's apparently a tabletop role playing game. Yeah, I'm not familiar with it either. I will say appropriate topic for the show, wish, but I have known nothing about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I I wish I had more time to play. Um, I can't even remember the name of it uh shadow of the demon lord but yeah we haven't had a chance so. i i wish i had more time to play tabletop games in general but i don't it, yeah. that's why like the only time i end up playing them is when i'm hosting them because that means i have time for it <laughs> mm-hmm. oh vampire the masquerade is world of darkness okay mm. i am familiar with Ma- uh, vampire the masquerade i uh <laughs> i did not know that it was the same thing. yeah it must be a module for that setting or something i don't know how that what the words are but okay so we did talk a bit about 1.6 a little bit yeah but like uh could, we were kind of waiting I... for you to experience more of it because you were you, oh, okay. you could just open up a file that was already to, ready to jump in that stuff i still have to work towards it but i know you said you started <laughs> like a new one anyway right i did yeah yeah, I did yeah. start from scratch but you also so, get to move a lot faster when yeah. you're not playing multiplayer on p- other people's schedules. It's funny, it doesn't feel like it, but I guess, I, like, I I take a long time per day, but, yeah, I've yeah. been playing for hours and hours and hours because I just can't. shows us elaborating. So World of Darkness, I think, is the greater name of it, and Vampire the Masquerade is, like, the, right. the main thing, and then there's other things of it but that's like the name of the world or yeah. the system is world of darkness okay that makes a lot more sense i've just only ever heard of vampire the masquerade so kind of like how there's dungeons and dragons but then there's like um what is what is that there, there's like a vampire setting for dungeons and dragons too right um i guess but, um i'm not familiar I with it I, I know of some of the smaller stuff for D, but just Forgotten Real- Realms, like whatever version of Forgotten Realms, because technically each Forgotten World Realms is its own world. It's just like a copy of the world, like a split timeline. Um, that's like the only stuff I follow, unless there's like an interesting novel, you know. Mm-hmm. Ravenloft, that's what I was Ravenloft. thinking of. Okay. Ravenloft. Mm-hmm. It's like a gothic, it's a gothic setting yeah. in with the Dungeons and Dragons rules. Never, Ra- never gotten go. into Ravenloft. I'm sure it might be fun. Yeah. I just never, I never did. And I, I so I'd it. have to play like an, a, a retrofitted older setting of it because I just don't like 5e. I don't like 4e either. Anything before that, I'm fine. There, <laughs> when was the last time they came out with a Dragonlance setting? Like, I don't think they've done Dragonlance for 5e, have they? Sometimes they port the old stuff, like uh, Tomb of Horrors, the the most popular dungeon ever uh, by Gygax himself has been ported all the way to 5e. I don't know if they've done that Mm -hmm. with the Dragonlance stuff, but um, occasionally they do that. They'll just take their old stuff, they'll remaster it with the new rules, with some changes so it fits it. Wait a minute. Wow, I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. There is a Dragonlance uh setting for for fifth edition yeah i'm not surprised i just didn't hear about it yeah i didn't hear about it either uh introduces dragonlance setting it's called dragonlance shadow of the dragon queen wow that's cool with a focus on the war of the lance it probably is its most interesting setting i'd have to say i i think so i think even without that people can enjoy the setting and it's more interesting than like the base setting of the game yeah, so the, the reason why it only came out a year ago, a little over a year ago. So, okay, mm-hmm. interesting. It took, took them long enough. Yeah. That's cool. Like I said, they, they, huh. they're they constantly porting their old stuff, 
but because they're doing that, like, I just never hear when it comes out. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been paying attention. I don't particularly like 5th edition, but I might have to get this Dragonlance book. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm split. That's a... uh, and I have been for a while, and I do think, ultimately, 5th edition is worse than 4th edition, but 5th edition still doesn't burn me as much as 4th edition did, because 4th edition is just... Mm too video gamey fifth edition is less video gamey but it's somehow even more handholdy which is yeah. why i'm like split on which one i hate more oh wait that's not a D, &D beyond digital code is it oh no it's a real book okay okay Phew. yeah because fuck D, &D beyond <laughs> i know i was like wait a minute they also they have they also have like just a digital code but i'm like no i want a book i want a fucking book even if i never play it i like the books oh, yeah yeah but uh yeah they also have spell jammer that's cool i used to i used to play a spell jammer video game uh based on i guess second edition i think back when they had that in the in the early 90s we'll, we'll play the uh we'll stardew valley tabletop game rpg <laughs> i i have the uh there's a board game i know there's I, a board game but i, I want yeah. like a ttrpg yeah. that has like the oh. whole rules. Uh, we could just use the wiki. The character <laughs> schedules can function the way they do. You have to, you have to follow the yeah. day by day. That, that, would, that would be interesting. It would be difficult, too. I, I feel like it would be harder to play that game uh, than it would yeah. be to play the actual video game. Because not only are you reliant on the DM to be like juggling all the schedules, like they have to basically have them up at the same time. Like, okay, who, who are you yeah. trying to... Okay, where, where is this person right now? Um but also being fair to what's going on. Like, that, that would be too much. Just, just play the video game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kat, you know, that damn uh, reaction button is... I, I can't see what Fizz is saying because the stupid reaction uh, Last thing you said was World of Darkness is the exact same world. It's just split into different, like, oh. monster types. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's the overall world, but then there's, like, different factions and you play the game mm -hmm. around that monster yeah yeah at least well, that's what i was reading before uh when you were mentioning it like i, I kind of piece that together yeah. i guess so yeah we we have no idea if it's possible to make world of darkness popular for this I mean, yeah obviously not probably not because we hadn't even heard of it <laughs> well like so this is, I've, I've never been that interested in vampire the masquerade like ever uh, there's some interesting fa parts to it. I, I do kind of like the gothic nature. But, God, it's... It has that edgelord feel to it. Like, for people who aren't already in it, it, it kind of has that, like, goth kid, emo kid, sitting in the corner of the cafeteria feel to it. And that's just immediately, mm. from a marketing uh, perspective, going to drive away most people. E even, like tabletop yeah. nerds it's just not going to attract most people I, I, that's why like ravenloft is its own tiny thing that already isn't that popular within most uh D, &D circles right so now you're trying to have something that's not the most popular game it's its own system and you're trying to sell it to this niche group of people it does well in itself like uh masquerade still sells quite enough enough that they've made video games off of it but it's it's mm -hmm. kind of always going to be niche it's just a big niche. Yeah. I think those gothic settings, they they have a dedicated following. It's yeah. just kind of small and niche, like you said. And I'll, I like some gothic settings. I think I just kind of prefer it in video games, though, because there's the risk of, like, I don't, I just don't like a lot of the other people who are into gothic settings. And for a tabletop game, <laughs> you have to play them with other people who are into those settings, right? It's also why I wouldn't be that interested in, say, a gothic MMO. But a single-player game, all I have to deal with is myself. <laughs> true, true. Like, I do like, uh, what's what's the name of that game? Uh, Blood, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. And, of yeah. course, anything Castlevania. Yeah, yeah. No, those are good. I like Thief. Thief is a very gothic game. Oh, I've not played that. Yeah, yeah. Thief is fun. Thief, mm. Thief's like the original uh, kind of th uh, 3D stealth game. Cool. 
Well, uh, if you want to keep talking a little bit more about Stardew Valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, because we haven't gotten to, you you wanted to talk about, what's that new place? It was like Green something or whatever. I can't remember the name. Oh, the Green Rain. Green Rain, yeah. The Green Rain. Yeah, it's not a new place. It's everywhere. (laughs) Oh, is it? But um, I I will, so yeah, how far have you gotten? Are you into summer yet? Um, Maybe I just did not pay attention when I was in summer uh, Uh, because we're in year two. You'd notice... Oh, maybe you didn't notice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're in year two. I, huh. I, I did not notice any green rain. I'm, I'm sure it happened, and I just didn't. Was a pay- listen. I was on a mission because I was competing against two other people for uh, yeah. trying to get Abigail. So like, I was in the mines half the time trying to get like extra uh, amethyst. I'm guessing you you had to have like missed that whole day though, because I guess so. The green rain, the green rain is one random day in the summer. Uh, so if you're, are you up to summer on year two? Yeah, I, I think we're in spring we're in year spring. two at the moment, so I'll probably okay. notice it next time around. So, yeah, yeah, pay attention. Uh, <laughs> although it's funny because, um, I mean, like the whole world is different. Yeah. Like, how, well, how it might have been a, well, it might have been a day I wasn't playing. So there, summer. Okay, had, I played most of the summer into the fall. <laughs> But I missed maybe like the very, very beginning of summer. Hmm. And it might have yeah, happened in bizarre. our team at the it... beginning of it. Uh, and I, then I missed some yeah. fall because uh, we were playing an off schedule. So not everybody was playing every day. Hmm. Yeah. You, I mean, yeah. it was really hard to miss because like. But I did not experience this thing. So it probably was at the very beginning of the yeah. summer when I wasn't playing. It could have been. Like I said, it's, yeah. a, it's a random day from 1 I, to 28. I, I think I came in um, during like this, the second or third week of summer. So randomly, it might oh, have been the first or you almost, early second. Yeah. You must, you had to have missed it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's funny because like, so the weatherman the day before basically says something about, yeah, there's interference. We can't tell what the weather's going to be like tomorrow. And then the day of, the, the TV's just static. And then um, it's like green static. And then you go outside and it's like, it, 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 it well, it's, it's, it's raining green rain, <laughs> obviously. And there's uh, like all of this, um, uh, what do you call it? Like, you know, the grass that, that kind of grows randomly in different places. It's yeah. just, everywhere but it's not normal grass it's like mossy grass and it's okay. everywhere like you you basically take out your uh scythe because everywhere you get like you couldn't have missed it because you have to scythe your way through it's like suddenly you're in the middle of a jungle okay. everywhere you go and uh you get like like you'll get like 200 moss uh which is kind of useful because you can use it for lots of new yeah so i'm just cool gonna guess recipes. i missed it because it happened when i wasn't playing yeah yeah. yeah, and like all these crazy new trees pop up. A lot of the existing trees turn into the weird trees, at least for a day. And then uh, after that, actually, it's kind of interesting because it makes it easier to complete the um, the uh, community center in the first year mm-hmm. because <clears throat> normally you almost always have to get a uh, – what, what is the uh, – that green fern – plant that you can only get in the in the 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 back not the backwoods but the uh the extra woods i don't know the the magic woods or whatever where you get the the hardwood so i think they're literally called the backwoods that's what i always refer to it as unless there's another place called the backwoods okay there is like when you go up north of your of your uh, farm that's called the backwoods. Oh, the I think one it's that called leads the... to Robbins is called the backwoods. Okay, then yeah, yeah it's probably yeah. like the yeah. Mystic Woods or some shit like that. But I always refer to that Something when I'm talking like to people as the backwoods because that seems yeah, more like yeah. the backwoods than that route to uh, Robbins' house. True, true, yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, so normally you have to get a what is the name of it? That green fern plant that only grows in that area. I don't know the name um, of it. I know what you're talking about. I I just don't know the name of like fiddle, half fiddle. the shit in the game. I know more from like the icon yeah. than anything. 
Fiddle, fiddlehead fern, that's what it's yeah. called. You, you, I think you always have to get a fiddlehead fern to complete the community center. Well, it only grows in the summer in the what we're calling the backwoods. And so you have to get the, uh, what is it called? The iron uh, axe to be able to get in order there. to get there. Yeah. By yeah. summer. Yeah, and it's, right, by yeah. summer, it's difficult to get that early enough mm -hmm. to get it on the first year. Especially well, with the if green that's rain. not the only thing that you're prioritizing, because like, right. there's other things. Hard hardwood is great, but like having a like an iron watering pail could be more important because you don't have access to iridium mm -hmm. sprinklers yet, or you know, having an iron yeah. pickaxe might be more important too. Like, there's there's other things you have to yeah. juggle. Yeah. 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 So if you if you want to fit it well, this basically uh, negates that whole problem of trying to finish the community center in the first year, um, because basically some of the weird trees stay after the green rain, mm -hmm. and if you tap them with a tapper, instead of giving you like syrup or something, it gives you those fiddlehead ferns. Okay, so. well, there's also. Um... There's another thing that you need from back there for the community center, but you can wait till winter to get it because it's there year round. And there's a fish that's only in that pond back there that you need for it. But you're yeah. not limited to summer. You could like you could have waited. Right. A lot of people upgrade their tools during the winter. You could get it then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. Was that the mm -hmm. fiddle is available one season only? And I think I think in some patch maybe 1.5, uh, he you have the option of making sure that it appears in the, uh, whatever it's called, the cart that appears every once in a while. Like you can, there's a setting when you first start a game that says like guarantee that it's possible to finish the community center in the first year. And that, I, I think it causes things like that to appear more often mm -hmm. in the, uh, you know, the, the, the traveling cart or whatever. Oh, okay. See, I'm not worried about ever finishing it in the first year. I know there's a lot of people that are. Eh. Like, as long as I get it done yeah. by year two, that's all that matters. Yeah. I like to just get it done as quickly as possible. Yeah, okay. I like to get the uh, greenhouse as quickly as possible mm -hmm. because I, I I don't like um I don't like planting trees outside because then they only uh, grow fruit like one season out of the year, yeah. and I always have to end up getting another tree to. Put in the My greenhouse. priority is uh, the minecart. That's a good one too. Yeah. Um. But uh, anyway, and there's a lot of so what I think another one of the additions of 1.6 is that I think it's if you chop down a fruit tree, you get a fruit tree. Uh. You can like get it seed. to replant, basically. Yeah, like seeds. Yeah, right. yeah, seed. Yeah, so for the first time ever, you can replant trees without having to buy them again. Fruit trees. Um, yeah, because the only thing you could get were like um, the pine and maple like seeds. Those were like right. the only things you yeah. could replant before. Yeah. Oh, with the green rain, by the way. It's it's kind of a shame that you miss the first year because the first year, everyone in town panics. Oh, and it's new to I them. think yeah. that, yeah, and I think most of them end up. Uh, is it at Pierre's? No, 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 they all end up at the bar mm. because uh, what's what's his name? The the bartender. Um, I want to say Sam. Is that his name? No. Uh, no. Anyway. Is it uh, Gus the bartender? Gus. Yeah. 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 Right. So Gus puts out a you'll you know you get a note from Gus that says I'm 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 opening up the bar like immediately earlier than you, I think he usually opens it's at noon. noon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll open it up immediately as a shelter so anyone can come here if they're scared of the rain. So like ha most of the people are in the bar basically panicking. I think year two onward they're a little bit they're mm -hmm. they're fine. But uh is this kind of a funny event? That I did not read about. I did not expect it. I didn't. I didn't know what it just to, happened to you. I was like, "What the hell?" Which is for yeah. The best. I didn't know if you were going to get poisoned. Or... Like the the first time Sorry, I played I uh, Stardew, I didn't look anything up. Like I was prepared to even yeah. possibly fail 
uh, the first time around. Like, we're getting mm -hmm. a bad score for the farm. Uh, because, like, I just wanted to experience the game. So I had to figure mm -hmm. everything out myself. Yeah. One of the reasons Sorry why I have, like, <laughs> uh, Abigail schedule almost memorized because I, I started playing the game like I like this chick uh, so I had to like figure out all that stuff out myself now though you know, I just look everything up I don't care even, even the new things like I just look <laughs> it up I don't I don't care I've already yeah. played through the normal version of the game once I don't mm. want to deal with that stuff anymore that, that's that's my moment of discovery is when I play through things once uh, would the islands yeah. have been a cool thing to just discover the first time? Sure, but half of that stuff had already been spoiled from me watching my brother play through it. So it's like it's there's yeah. not much for me to discover anymore. I'm just looking stuff up. Mm -hmm. There's also some cool new uh, like prize type things. Like um, there's a there's a new event. Uh, I think it's called the trout fishing tournament or something like that. It goes for two days, I believe, in the spring. So, if, did you do that? Did you do that when it came, or did you miss that? Uh, we're still miss, in actually. spring, so I don't know if it's passed yet. We're we're pretty early spring because okay. once we hit year two, we have not been playing very regularly. Um, the last time okay. we played, we played like three days, and the the host of the game just wasn't feeling well, so we we stopped playing, and that, mm. that's kind of just been the pattern so far. We did the squid yeah. off last year though. That was fun. I, I you know, I like the squid off. Oh, I didn't is that a new thing? I don't know how new it is. I just that was the first time I experienced it. There's a squid fishing thing. I, oh, that must be new. Yeah, so, yeah. Is that later I, in the year? I don't know when it happened. I don't know if it happened early spring okay. or if it happened late winter. I just know it was something that happened not too long ago when we played. But there's mm. like a it lasts for like okay. three days, like a whole weekend or whatever. And each day you're trying to catch up like, like 12 squid. If you happen to catch 12 squid, you get the max points that you need for it. And then you can trade those points oh. in for stuff each day. You can get like a squid hat okay. and stuff like that. No, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I haven't done that yet. Um, and it was very easy but, to uh, cheating because we all, well, not all of us, but at least two of us hate the fishing in the game. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so the trout one's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, if you fish in the uh river i think it has to be in the woods um uh there's a chance that whenever you catch a rainbow trout it will have like a golden ticket attached to it and yeah. basically you just catch as many as you can and you turn in your golden tickets and you get prizes so it's just you know everything from a diamond to i think movie tickets and uh, all kinds of other things so yeah um, I guess maybe maybe you don't get the tickets until after you fix the movie theater. <laughs> Probably but, not. Um, uh, then there's the. Uh, have you noticed the? There's a prize thing in uh, Lewis's house now. No, I did not know as well. that. Yeah, if you do, have you not gotten any tickets? Like, do you do the uh, favors for the for the villagers? I, when they ask for things? Yeah, if they ask for something, I do favors, yeah. Um, Sometimes they'll give you a ticket. Oh, okay. Sometimes they'll give you a ticket. Just take it to Lewis's house, and if you've if he's not explained it to you yet, he, he should, like, the first time you go in there. Yeah. Um, Sorry, but you I'm basically, it's just something a, uh, semi-important, but I am listening to what you're saying. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. No, well, okay. anyway, we don't have to go in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, so I haven't obviously experienced much. I, I'm right at the end of summer. Um, but uh, I will say there's breaking news. Uh, patch 1.6.3, which just came out mm -hmm. seven days ago, uh, changes the um, Clint so that you can uh, get geodes broken while he's upgrading your your thing yeah i remember that so we we did play since then but only like three days that that was the last time we played was like three days uh and that, i remember that was such a big deal it's like oh yeah. because like oh my god busy with your thing and it's like but i've got all these geodes that and is... if you don't have the yeah. geo cracker at home yet which we we don't we have one now so that's that's not an issue anyway yeah. but if i was playing a new run that would be an <laughs> issue and yeah I think they added the geode cracker in 1.5 too. That's a recent thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But or is I, that I, always the, 
I don't know, but it wouldn't matter because that's since I've played the game again. I, I haven't played since like yeah. way long ago, and th then I started playing after it's already been done, <laughs> so that's all that matters to me. Yeah. Well, I will. I'll just. I'll just add the the uh, the um, Ginger Island, which I've spent a lot of time on because it's been around for three years. Um, I, I wonder how they did that for multiplayer because. For single player, you're trying to, you have to get these golden um, coconuts, mm -hmm. and there's a limited number of them. You get certain things once you get, like, you know, I don't know, 10, 20, 50, something like that. So I wonder if it's just the collective, if everyone gets, you know, for what? A total of 50. Uh, it opens up different parts of the island. You, you, you oh, get okay. different things. There's set. Uh, typically either prizes or, or stuff like that things that open up only one player has to do it yeah. right like uh, okay. getting the key for the sewer once one person gets it everyone has access to whichever the, whoever's the first person mm -hmm. I wasn't the one who picked up the key but I went and opened up the sewer grate you know oh. so I, I'm assuming so probably that's probably the how the way, coconuts so. work yeah yeah it's which would I imagine make it a bit easier for multiple people because I think there's only like 120 golden coconuts. So yeah. if everyone is out there hunting for them, you're going to get... Multiplayer is just easier in general. Like just everything about the yeah. game is easier when you're playing multiplayer. You don't have to worry yeah. about stuff. The only thing that becomes harder is if uh, you and the other person necessarily want to go for the same uh, possible partner. Because then you have to compete with each yeah. other. Yeah. <laughs> but... uh yeah, so you should have some fun with, uh, well, if you ever play again, yeah. <laughs> Ginger Island. But yeah, there's, there's all kinds of new stuff. I mean, there's a whole new farm uh, with a house that you can, I think you can upgrade the house. Like, you can live yeah. over there on the island if you want. Um, I don't know if your partner comes with you. I don't think they do. Um, yeah, but, so you know, I, I wouldn't live They stay there. at home. You know, I, I would travel yeah. back and forth. But I know you. there's like, you could set up a teleporter or something like that. Yeah, so there's, I mean, you can use the usual teleporters. The, I know you can use the totems uh, the, to go back. The one-time yeah. totems, yeah. yeah. But you can also get permanent ones from the wizard yeah. um, to go back and forth all you like. Uh, there's also a volcano with some more powerful yeah. creatures and stuff. And I think there's a tougher uh, dungeon that they added in 1.6, but I haven't gotten to that yet. Yeah. All I know so. is uh, we have made it to the point that I am probably a week away from my character's first child so i've, I've made it that oh, wow. far to the game yeah that was fast well i mean when you have to compete against somebody else to be able to get it's like you're you're on that game <laughs> yeah 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 i usually take my time like uh yeah. I'll, I'll i'll complete the thing you know the, the requests as much as i can i don't worry too much about just giving random yeah. presents or not random but the correct presents uh <laughs> But, um, uh, shoot, what was I going to say about that? Oh, um, I always try to do the ones that, that make everyone happy. Like the, uh, the luau, the summer luau. Oh no, you, you know what? I'm actually, uh, near the end of fall in my game. Actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the summer luau, I, I, I don't remember. Well, I guess it depends on what kind of farm. So I tried the, are you on the new farm, the new farm type? The one Meadows with the bluegrass? Yeah. Yes, we're on that one. Yeah. So if you have chickens from the very start, uh, a golden um, mayonnaise will give you the best result at the, okay. at the luau, I found. So it's just like, oh, that was easy. So I think yeah, we had like a, some iridium quality fish or something. So we just threw that in. We won. Yeah. The, like we, we got the passing thing that you need for the luau. It doesn't. Yeah, it, it, well, it depends on what fish you use because there's well, only, I mean, only very um, rare fish will give you the best result. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. We we got whatever the best result was. We so we apparently had the oh, right good. things. So I didn't pay attention. Yeah. Only two of us were playing we that time. Wiki. Yeah, only only two of us were playing. I didn't have anything, so the person who was hosting the game gave me something. I don't even know if she looked. We we probably just guessed. I threw something in and it worked out in our favor. <coughs> oh, good. 
Yeah, well, I figured out that, yeah, uh, golden or iridium um, mayonnaise will do it. So, yeah. Makes, makes, makes that very easy if you're on the new farm. But we're about 50 minutes in, so is there anything else about Stardew you wanted to say, or were you ready to move on to something else? No, I probably bored everyone. I think okay. I don't know if anyone's even well, here you watching. you said you want to talk about it. I <laughs> wanted to give you time to talk about yeah. it. I like Stardew too, but it wasn't on my schedule yeah. otherwise. Um, it's so, fun. Yeah, we've got other things. Uh, I wanted to talk about the Hoyo uh, April Fool's thing. But I can save that for later. We, we can sandwich some other interesting things in between. Mm. Uh, did you hear about the thing that was trending today? Probably not. Okay. I don't know. So, well, um, Final Fantasy VI? <laughs> no, Final Fantasy VI was trending... Uh, was it yesterday or two days two ago? Days. I think I think it was uh, Tuesday. It was the 30th anniversary of Final Fantasy VI. So... Happy 30th birthday, uh, the best Final Fantasy that still has yet to be topped in the series so far uh, since it was made. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't have too much to say about that other than it was the 30th anniversary. I don't want it to have a remake. I just want it to have, or I guess it technically would be a remake. I want it to be done in the Octopath Traveler style. That's the most I want from it, uh, similar to how... Dragon Quest be 3 cool. is being made. I don't want it to get the Rebirth remake uh, treatment. You guys will just fuck it up. Just whatever, okay? That's all I want to say on that, unless you have anything you want to say on Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> no. no okay, it. so the thing tra trending today is um, BAFTA has their gaming awards coming up. Uh, the the British Academy for like film, television, arts, and stuff like that. I, th I think that's what it stands for. I just know it's a British organization. Um, actually, here, let me look up what BAFTA means. I, I'd be funny if I got it right. Um, it is the... the film Awards or the Game British awards? Academy Film Awards. Yes, and so for television arts. I was right. I, I had the name completely right. Cool, I didn't even have to look it up, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So, uh, BAFTA ran a player's poll ahead of time for the most iconic video game character of all time. And some of these definitely uh, all belong on the list. They gave us the top 20, but the mm -hmm. order of it is very questionable. And some of it, I think, I think number one only got to where it is because it's a British award. It's a British poll. Yeah. And number one it's a British was character. Lara Croft, who is in herself, yeah, a British character. Uh, she was even... Mm. Um, mm. Let's see. The original voice actress was even awarded back in like the 20th BAFTA Game Awards by the Queen herself. Uh, because the voice actress was also British. So, it's like, wow. I get it. There's no way that Laura Croft is more iconic than Mario or even yeah. half the characters on this list, like Sonic the Hedgehog, more iconic than Laura Croft. Uh, Pac-Man, more iconic. Pikachu uh, is probably the only one that you could say is remotely as iconic as Mario. Like, the, those two could go head in head, and that's because Pokemon yeah. is, like, the most popular thing on the planet. But some of these other ones, mm -hmm. like, number three... Agent 47 from Hitman. There's, there's no way he's beating a lot of the people on that list either. Yeah. You know? I I didn't even know. I mean, I kind of recognize the name, but just barely. Yeah. If you didn't say Agent from 47. Hitman, a what lot of people... Um, Agent yeah. 47, yeah. Uh, that's his name. Um, if, you, if you said his name <laughs> straight out, most people wouldn't know if you didn't put the word Hitman. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. Other ones on here, Link is number seven. Probably should also beat Laura Croft uh, and Agent 47. Yeah. Solid Snake Sack is Boy? also Sackboy from uh, Little Big Planet. He should be on the list yeah. maybe, but he should be like number 20 or whatever, right? There, there's characters yeah. that are more iconic than Sackboy. Uh, he's become associated yeah. with PlayStation though, so I understand. Uh, other people going eight, Master Chief. Uh, I think Lara Croft is yeah. more iconic than Master Chief. She's older. Uh, I think about the same number yeah, of people probably know her. Uh, mm -hmm. Kratos, he's he's very iconic. He belongs on the list. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about number nine. Like, I, if I had an Excel sheet up 
where I could easily drag these people around, I would drag this list yeah. in at least how I would <laughs> think they're iconic talking to normies a lot. Like, which one of these characters would somebody who really doesn't play video games know? Mm -hmm. And I do think almost everyone on this list, almost everyone, should be on the list somewhere. But there are some other characters mm -hmm. that maybe should be on the list that didn't make it in the top 20. Um, mm -hmm. And the well, order should so definitely be just his Solid Snake is on there. Solid Snake is on there. He's 14. He should probably be higher. Yeah. Uh, Steve from Minecraft should be higher than 13. He should definitely be higher than Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption, who's 11. Way more people know or... who Steve is than they even know. Nobody even knows Arthur Morgan's name. <laughs> yeah. Who the hell is Shadowheart from Baldur's Gate 3? Yeah, number that, 10? that's recency bias, right? Like, nobody yeah. knows who Shadowheart is. How is, I mean, it's almost like, the, it's the opposite of iconic, right? Yeah. I mean, Laura Croft at least to, had movies made like, after her, right? She belongs, maybe yeah. top 10. I could see arguing top 10 for Laura Croft. <laughs> yeah, it has to have some staying power. Yeah. Right? And now, they, they, they gave... So 16 is Cloud Strife. Who should also be I don't be know. Higher. I think... But I think Sephiroth is more uh, iconic than Cloud, don't you think? I, I would say, too, or, that Sephiroth is more iconic than Cloud. For sure. Or was this uh, only Heroes? It just no, says just video character. game characters of all time. And if you were to pick one mm. character from that game, Sephiroth is more iconic than Cloud. Uh, yeah. I would say Sephiroth is more iconic than uh, Solid Snake. Uh, even though Snake is... Well, Snake is older. Solid Snake isn't. They're about contemporaries because technically the Snake from the original Metal Gear games is not Solid Snake. Hmm. It's a different Snake. Um, but snake in people's skin. head, they just lump all the Snakes together as Solid Snake. So you know what? That there's yeah. kind of a pass there. Um, well, yeah, it, I, on, on the on the BAFTA website, it says debuting in 1987's yeah. Metal Gear. And it says his real name is David? <laughs> I didn't know that. Because the, technically the original snake is the guy you later know is Big Boss. Oh. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, who else is on here? Another. There's two Baldur's Gate 3 characters. I don't know either of these characters. Like, looking at their name, I could not even picture who they are in my head of the cast list. I know who Asterian is. I don't. I mean, uh, right. Yeah. So talk about recency bias. It is just a really popular yeah. game now. But like, I iconic is something with staying power, right? I don't even yeah. know if I'll know these characters five, ten years from now. Yeah. Kiryu from Yakuza, great character. I don't think m most people know who he is. If you were to just say yeah. Kazuma Kiryu, I, I. Don't think he's iconic. Maybe eventually, but he Yakuza has always been kind of niche, you know. So, mm -hmm. I mean, where's where's Samus Aran from Metroid? Yeah. yeah, why is like Ellie from The Last of Us, which I I you could argue is now an iconic character, definitely doesn't belong in top twenty anywhere. Maybe top one hundred, just because Last of Us is stupidly popular for no reason. Nathan Drake definitely all of every character on this list is more iconic than Ellie, but at least she's number nineteen. But Nathan Drake should probably be higher in there. More people know who uh, Nathan Drake is than anything. This is a pretty bad list. It yeah. is apparently a poll, but it is a poll done specifically for the British audience, and I do think some of these characters' mm -hmm. recency bias is up here. Yeah. I don't even know who Gwimbly is. Oh, Gwimbly's not a real character. That that was from Smiling Friends. It was the, <laughs> the character we were talking about. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Supposed to be video game characters. Uh, well, he was a video game character in their world. He was the, uh, the down-on-his-luck former, like, PlayStation mascot character. So, like, I get oh. the joke. It's an inside joke for people I, who happen to have ca caught yeah, the yeah. Uh, April Fool's premiere <laughs> of Smiling Friends. Gotcha. I, like, where's Mega Man? He's not on yeah, the Mega list. Yeah, Mega Man's not on the list. Um, where's Spyro the Dragon? It should be on this, like, with Crash yeah. Bandicoot. Uh, I don't think they're super like, high, but they should be, like, 
I don't know, 17 and 18 together. Yeah, I never played Spyro, but I you know, know the it. character. I would call it iconic. Yeah. yeah. Where's Donkey um, Kong? Like, there should be way more Nintendo characters on here uh, in general. Yeah. I mean, you could probably name half a dozen. Do Donkey Kong Mario is series. probably like one of the most iconic video game characters of all time. You don't even have Mario without yeah. Donkey Kong. Like, they, they require each other. <laughs> I mean, I would... It's, it, I, Apparently, it's okay to have multiple from the same game since they have two from yeah. Baldur's Gate 3. You so don't I even have to say I, like, each... that Donkey Kong is from Donkey Kong either, right? You could, or from Mario. You could put the word Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong on there. Yeah. 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 But yeah, you could have Peach. I mean, I, th I don't think you should be having multiple. I think a game series should have yeah. their icon, which is another reason why I'm like, Baldur's Gate, why do you have two? This is a really horrible poll in general. Like, Plus, one of them, I have no idea who it is. Like, I just happened to know the Asterian guy mm -hmm. because he was the one who is in the... He, he doesn't have to be in the scene, but uh, when they previewed the scene where you have sex with a bear, he was the guy. Was, is Shadowheart, like, I know him from. that, like, dark haired like elfish chick or whatever who dresses like a native american like I, I i don't i don't actually know like any of the characters names really <laughs> uh she is... or is she like a druid yes. or something like i don't i don't know what what she is i just i've i have like a, a vague picture in my head very vague yeah. of this character i don't know that i've ever seen her yeah kirby isn't on there yes i the show's out thank you <laughs> Where the yeah. hell is Kirby? Good one. Yeah, I don't even... I, I, I don't know this Shadow Heart person. Um, like, you know what I would do? Instead of a poll, just... right? Like, I, well, it technically would still be a poll, but I would do a survey instead of a poll. And yeah. I would just go around to, like... I don't know, a, a few hundred normies, right? Like, I on camera, mm -hmm. I... I Bring a clipboard, t uh, tally it up, and I would just ask them off the top of their head, who is the most iconic video game character, right? And mm -hmm. it would basically just be a sheer numbers thing, how often the character comes up. Eventually, you would end up getting at least 20 characters, but you would also know by um, like the magnitude of how often the character came up, who was more iconic than yeah. not. I'm sure like Mario and Pikachu are probably going to be at the top of the lists, right? And yeah. then you'll get some other characters what about, after that. What about um, Dante from Devil May Cry? Dante? He's, he's, um, he's iconic enough. I Maybe top 100, yeah. but he wouldn't be anywhere close to the top of the list because he's also kind of niche. Because like, I'm talking about like what normies would know. Who's like Banjo-Kazooie? Guy... Normies know Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah. What about the, the guy, uh, what's his name, from... Um, uh, Oh, what's that portal? Uh, what's the name of that game? Not Halo. Uh, the one that takes place in the portal universe. Uh, Half Life. Oh, Half Life. Yeah, Freeman. Freeman. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess, I, guess I, not, I, I couldn't. Remember yeah, if you can't name. remember his name, I don't. I don't think Freeman's that iconic. There's a, there's a huge fan base, but no. I don't even think like Shell from yeah. Portal's that iconic. I would like, but that, that's that's wishful thinking, you know. Because I'm trying to think, like, what would normies know? Yeah. I mean, Mario and Pikachu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there's definitely characters two. on this list. Wreck-It Re yeah. Ralph. I mean, Mario, it's not really a video game Mario's, <laughs> Mario's more popular than Mickey Mouse. Yeah, I so mean, is Pikachu. <laughs> Pikachu's yeah. probably more popular than Mario. Sadly. Uh, well, I guess not sadly. Pokemon's good. But, but they're both up there. You know, like, those should be the characters that are yeah. at the top of the list. Nobody should be beating them. <laughs> Crazy. Um, King DVD. I'm just trying to think, like, other other things that random... If I, if I ask somebody who doesn't even play video games at all, would they know this character? That That's kind mm. of, like, the mark of uh, being iconic. I don't think any Resident Evil character is, other than possibly Leon. L uh, Leon might be the only one that a normie might know. 
But I think the thing that stops it is the fact that, like, none of the main Resident Evil characters were really the main characters of the movies, yeah. right? Alice was the main character of the movie, and the other ones kind of were, like, supporting characters that would show up. If the Resident Evil mm -hmm. movies were actually following the stories of the characters, then I think Resident Evil characters would be more iconic. Albert Wesker. Actually, you know what? I think everybody might know Wesker. You could throw Wesker on it. More people might know him than mm -hmm. Leon, right? And Wesker was even in the movies. I, I think you could probably put him in the top 100 list, possibly. Um... How about, how about anyone from Mortal Kombat? <laughs> uh, like Sub-Zero. Probably three. Scorpion. Scorpion's probably... When, when people think Maybe, yeah. Mortal Kombat, a lot of people think Scorpion. They even kind of hear, like, the get over here in their head. Yeah. 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 I, I can see Scorpion. When most people do crossovers, too, Scorpion is the one who gets crossed over. So, mm -hmm. I, I would probably... Scorpion could be on the list somewhere. Or, Maybe top uh, 50, because how old uh, Mortal Kombat is. Yeah. Um... I'm just, I'm actually yeah. scrolling through a page of... of and there's you know, a movie. I think it's something kind of iconic. movie made after it, and the movie's been popular yeah. enough that they will probably be on the... They should be on the list, right? So I do think Lara Croft mm -hmm. deserves to be up there. Maybe even top 20, but not beating out Mario and Pikachu. Yeah. What about uh, Thrall from World of Warcraft? No, he's not iconic enough. I actually don't think there is a single... Warcraft character that's iconic enough. As much as I would yeah. like Warcraft to be more iconic, it's just not. I don't even, even think. Arthas? Yeah, Pikachu's number 12. Like, Arthas <coughs> is cool. I wish Normies knew who Arthas was. He's got probably the best story out of any character in the Warcraft universe, but. Yeah. You know, I, I played just a little bit since I've been playing uh, Season of Discovery. Yeah. I played a little bit of retail, and I went to Orgrimmar. Do you know who the war chief is now? Who? It's that it's that chick uh not even an orc. Mm. Uh mm. I, I can't even remember. The magic girl, not not Jaina, but the evil I don't I don't know, some some uh uh human woman. Ugh. That makes no sense. Get out of here. Retail, you lost the plot a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, and I have to say, the entire intro, 100% women. Like, yeah. I, I don't know if it's against female characters, but like, you go through this whole, because I, I wanted to try, Cosmic I never Gold tried. Was complaining like, about this a while ago, right? If you want to, and you, we, we've a, harped on this, right? You need war stories yeah. with men killing each other. That's what you need in yeah. Warcraft. S sweaty men hitting yeah. each other, that's right. And you can have uh, women in there, but they... The women need to be fighting alongside the sweaty men killing each other, right? Like that's right. why. Um, God, what's her I'm face? Like, what the hell is uh, this? Windrunner, right? The reason like she was mm -hmm. always cool is because she was alongside the men killing each other. Like everybody likes Sylvanas, yeah. or at least I like Sylvanas. But Sylvanas was killing alongside She's the, the men. Sylvanas is the war chief. I believe so. Why? I, I love Sylvanas. She shouldn't be the war chief. Yeah, Sylvanas Windrunner. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Sylvanas like she's Windrunner. She's probably my favorite character. Uh, she shouldn't be the war chief. Well, maybe she might be a. Okay, this is saying she's the former war chief. So maybe if you get like Dragonflight, which I've not paid yeah. for, she becomes something else. Or so, or it's, uh, there's a new war chief. If she was yeah, like. She was the war chief for a while. A temporary. Like if she was a holdover. That'd be fine. Like, I, I'd be fine if you were like, yeah. how somebody is king or queen regent during a time until the next person takes over. That that yeah. That's okay. But she's uh, I elf, don't know the story. Right? Yeah, yeah. Which is why, like, a if somebody elf. was from another race, I'd be fine if they were, like, a regent. Like, they were just a steward who was holding it until the next actual chief comes. Mm -hmm. But they, they can't be, like, the actual war chief, in no. my opinion, you know? Well, I, I wanted to try out because I'd never actually experienced, they have like a new intro area mm -hmm. for, you know, level one through 10 or whatever. Yeah, keep And talking. it was gonna cool. Fill okay, no problem. It, it was cool, but it was, it was all women. Like every character you ran into was a woman and they were like, like guiding you through, like they were this leader and tr trying to do something. I was like, okay, nothing against female characters, but like, 
this is egregious. Like no men, you didn't run into a single man. And then you get to Orgrimmar and it's like, there's a female war chief. And I'm like, yeah. what's going, what's happening? What is going on? <laughs> like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Like seriously, it, it, it's just because that's just not the kind of game it is or used to be. I mean, a different kind of game. Maybe that would work in Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah. Orcs versus humans is just a bunch of big sweaty men hitting each other. That's what it's supposed to be. Like, well, actually, it's even whatever. worse than that because, like, Sylvanas is like a like a night elf or whatever. So it's like they wouldn't put a, an elf in charge. No. Anyway, Fitzgerald has something to say. Apparently. Uh, well, I okay. need to know the parameters of what you want to say oh, before I let. He you means on. on the show. Okay, I thought he meant yeah. in the chat. Well, he, like, he you he can say whatever you want in the chat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm just still Walters, trying to think of like any know. other characters that uh, like normies would know that definitely because here's the thing Ellie Williams is she starting to become iconic now possibly just because they made a last of Us show before the show despite how much people rage about the game I wouldn't even say uh, she was iconic mm -hmm. um, all right just let, let him in he wants okay to say something. but depending on what he says I might kick him immediately let me let me actually <laughs> that's, that's, that's always that, that that's, that's always the message let's see uh, let me let me make sure i have our row set up before we do that there we go <laughs> we should have a call-in show and we should say we should have want. a call-in show but i don't uh, currently uh, have uh, another day of the week that's speak. open oh uh, can, can you hear me uh, yep. oh, go okay. ahead yes uh, what do you have to say about the, the, the list and i'm like wait for, for last, or, wait, wait, wait. I, I didn't know who Arthur Morgan even is until today. Okay. Yeah. So is, is that right. what you wanted to say? No, no, no. Not on that. Not on that. But also, uh, there's a whole slew of the Nintendo characters that's not on the list. As I assume, like, I already mentioned Kirby, but even then, like, um, Star Fox on the list. Star Fox um, on the list. I mean, I mean. I mean, Fox McCloud definitely is more popular than Arthur Morgan. I didn't even know Arthur Morgan. No, was. yeah, but I, I don't think Star Fox would be on the list. I don't think enough normies know. I mean, unless random Super Smash Brothers, right? But I'm trying to think of people who don't even play games, right? Like, yeah. uh, and, and Star yeah, Fox has never had any other media outside of being in games. Like, at least um, some of the Castlevania characters, right? Shoot, yeah, like, the <laughs> Belmonts. Uh, there, there's yeah. a whole Simon cartoon Belmont. based off of them, and Simon's even been in Captain N going all the way back. So, like, what? At least a Belmont, Simon, or Trevor should be on the list. I was mm. going to mention, uh, and I was going to mention, um, uh, another, another Nintendo character, uh, just one of the other sci fi, sci -fi games. Uh, yeah, Pitt would not be on the list either. I, I agree with that, Buck. Uh, as much as he likes him, as much as I like him, not enough normies know who Pitt is. Uh, Mario, Even though he, no, he was in Captain Mario, N, Mario, uh, but uh, not enough Mario. normies know what Captain N is. <laughs> Famous. <laughs> and uh, what was, there, there's another one. That, I was one I'm missing. Uh, Mario, Pikachu, Link, same. This is one I'm missing. Wait, what's one um, I'm missing? What's another? Another... Shoot, Tom Nook. Every normie knows who Tom Nook is. Look at animal, oh, yeah. how popular Animal Crossing's become. Oh, oh, that's that's one I was missing. Or at least K.K. Slider, one of those two. But, like, every... To the point Missing that, Animal like, Crossing? people who don't yeah. really play games make fun of, like, the Tom Nook Loan Shark memes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, the, none of it, the, the, the last video game topic I wanted to bring up was, uh, uh, was, uh, Ma Mass Effect 5, uh, apparently. Uh, uh, which is being teased. Um, but, what... Can you what game from a gameplay standpoint? What what can you possibly take Mass Effect? Um, there's everywhere you could take Mass Effect, but if we looked at the people who made Andromeda, there's nowhere they're gonna take it that's good. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know. Do, do those people? Are, but are actually, Shepard is a good example. Uh, I mean, Shepard is iconic enough not to be on this list because it's only top twenty. But enough people probably know about Commander Shepard that maybe somewhere top one hundred, top two hundred. Out of mm -hmm. all like video game mascots of all time, 
Yeah, yeah, uh, mm. yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I, like, I, I, like, again, I'm, surprised, I'm still shocked mm. by the Arthur Mur Morgan. The, like, wait, who is? Oh that? yeah. Like, I literally and Buck even brings up Mega Man should be up there. Dude had three TV shows in less than thirty years, which yes, we, we did Mega talk Man about Mega Man earlier. Mega Man and X, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the Mega Man Battle Mega Network. Man. Uh, Mega Man EXE had a cartoon. <laughs> exactly. So, hmm. so yeah, like, <laughs> like I'm like I'm not, like I'm still confused. You're like, wait, who, how many people know who who half these characters are? Like, um, uh, how's Lara Croft more popular than Pikachu? Like, I'm, I'm still confused on that. And because hmm. it's a British awards, that's the only thing I can explain. Uh, she is a British character who is voiced by a British voice actor. Even then, ba Bayonetta, Bayonetta is probably well, should be on this list or somewhere. <laughs> uh, Bayonetta, maybe by now could be top one hundred. She's still kind of new, and there, she, this is why I'm gonna think like people who don't play games know her. Are there people who don't play games that know Bayonetta? Yes, but we need to talk about frequency, right? If I if we were to ask random people, how frequently would people know? I, I, you can make some argument that maybe she's in the top one hundred now. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, I don't see no Street Fighter characters on that list. I yeah, have where's Chun Li? It's us again. Exactly. Street Fighter, Street Fighter characters have been more popular than Mortal Kombat. So why? In fact, um, jokingly, Joshua brought up Wreck It Ralph, but we can actually use Wreck It Ralph as a standard, even though he's not an actual video game character, really. I mean, I guess he technically is now because they made some stuff after his movie. But uh, let's look at the characters that show up in Wreck It Ralph with him, because those are iconic characters. They assume Hubert, Hubert, yeah, like anybody uh, would possibly know. Um, Hubert's lost his iconism, but he still mm. was popular enough that, like, the adults watching Wreck It Ralph knew who he was. Like, he was he was kind of like the whole yeah. he's not popular anymore. That's why his game got unplugged. Mm. But like. Bison and Bison was in there, right? Talk about Street Fighter, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Zangief was also in there, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Bowser, if you want to talk about another Bowser. Mario character, Mar like Mario and Bowser are more popular than Peach, even though Peach is popular. But a lot of people didn't even know Peach's name uh, at all mm -hmm. until they spelt it out for them in '64, because it was always P Toadstool. Yeah. But outside of Japan, where she was always called um, Peachihime. Uh, people are just like, oh, it's Princess Toadstool, right? But, like, Mario and Bowser, we've known King Koopa f from, like, the first Super Mario game, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Hubert was also in Pixels. Yep. But, like, there's a... Uh, uh, thanks for bringing that up, Buck. But, like, there's a lot of characters that you could just use as an example from Wreck-It Ralph. If it was in Wreck-It Ralph, people know who they are, for the most part. Mm-hmm. Mm, exactly. Uh, oh, okay. So I was wondering. I mean, I saw Laura yeah. Croft trending, and I had no idea why. But this is why was this was that voice actress? Was she the one who came out and said that Laura Croft was the first female lead character in a video I game? I don't know. It was. In, it's in one of the video. Uh, this interview right here, or this thing, right? If you go up mm. to the number one, where it's talking about uh, Laura Croft. And then there was also um, mm -hmm. a quote. It might have been from the voice actress. I don't remember the name of the voice actress who plays her. Oh, it's, uh, I can yeah. tell you, it's it's here. Shelly Blonde. Shelly Blonde. Yeah, Shelly Blonde. But... Yeah. But there were people who said that, and they're like, oh, yeah, sure. Um, Samus Aran didn't exist, you know? And yeah. she might not even be the first. She was just like the first uh, iconic one that people remember. I actually tracked down the first fe female named lead. female lead in a video game. I was just curious. I mean, this is serious. I actually did. Yeah. Uh, apparently, as far as we know, uh, it was a character named um, uh, Ben Thee, um, Oops, on an Apple II game in 1981 called mm. Galactic Saga 4. Koala's last redoubt <laughs> is is apparently the official first named yeah. female character. So that was four years before Samus Aran. Again, but who, who knows that game even exists? I, I didn't yeah, yeah. Know Nobody. The game just no, Sa if you're talking about like most iconic uh, leading female, Samus is going to be the answer. Oh, sure. 
Yeah, but that's like not 100%. what we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I was just uh, amused that apparently this voice actress thought that Laura Croft was the first female well, protagonist. Well, it's, it's, it's the whole thing about the one I care about is the first, right? It, it, it's um, yeah. every Marvel movie. It's the, the first blank to do blank, even though people have been doing yeah. it forever. First, first female action lead is like, okay, let's go back way back i mean there's terminator like, there's alien you know like we, we could go we could go further yeah. back you know and that's only in recent <laughs> history technically if we count b movies there were female action leads going back even further just not stuff people necessarily yeah. know about uh, oh but yeah, yeah. no it, it's it's kind of ridiculous uh th this yeah, yeah, i don't think are, are those people even gamers that that much I, yes I think it's <laughs> absolutely to... uh they're uh, you you could bring in, and we say British. They, they call it British. Technically, they pull the whole UK, even even outside of British people. But they're the people who run it, so they're British. I, I have a friend uh, in in the UK who has like fifty copies of the game Elite. Yeah, of like every every possible iteration of it. <laughs> like why? I don't know. I have a buddy uh, his collection. who got, was in gaming community so much. His uh, he goes by Domino online. He came all the way from Manchester, roomed with me, uh, down in uh, Austin for the ScrewTac gaming convention. And there, mm. there's definitely gamers in the UK. I, we've got a regular to our show uh, down in Wales, who's a <laughs> gaming customer. Yeah. You know, GMT. <laughs> okay. Mm. But uh, okay, okay, but like, 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 like okay. Uh, Not British, but you know, in the UK. Uh, uh, uh. Speaking of, uh, speaking of that uh, Mass Effect thing I brought up earlier, by the way, uh, uh I just want one thing. One thing I think think can um improve the gameplay, or at least alter it in a major way, which is, um, choose your race. Eh. That, what, eh. What, uh, I mean, I'm sure there's definitely a market for that. I know, personally, I don't care. But I, I could see a, at least um, a plurality of people who play Mass Effect that might want to choose their race. So, you, instead of just being a human, you could also yeah. be a Solarian. Mo most Solarian. people are going to pick human anyway, but I, there might be uh, enough people that I could see it being worth letting people pick their uh, race. Or, or pick a Sorab, because they have. Oh, I'm sure, uh, but like, even if we look at the metrics of any game that lets you pick the race, most people still end up picking humans anyway. I know, I know. I mean, yeah. I know. But I that's know, that's I... not an argument to say people shouldn't be able to pick the race. As long as there's enough people to make it worth it, uh, you don't want like a small minority. You want like a plurality of players. Then you should consider it as yeah, a developer. Yeah, yeah. Man, as long as it's I not going to make development time too much longer. Uh, well, at least, at least you should have skill bonuses based on your race. Uh, cause that, cause that that might help people help uh, help increase that. Like, uh, hmm. oh, am I just wrong? Be wrong. Um, no, I don't. I, I think you should have skill bonuses or or something based on the race, like traits, uh, just because it makes it more interesting. Yeah. I don't think that will actually make more people want to play the other races from a marketing standpoint. Like once they get into the game and they see the different traits, sure. Uh, but to make it worth making other races, you kind of want to pull to see if the interest is already there instead of wasting your time on it, right? Oh. Because a lot of people don't even care about subtraits when they play games like that, which uh, most people play on easy or normal mode in any game that gives them an option, which uh, there is an option like that for Mass Effect, but I'm just using this as an example of how most game players are. Most game players want a moderate difficulty, and when they do see other trade options, they assume that it's going to impact the game, right? Uh, or if there is a race whose trade off option makes the game easier, they'll opt in to play that race once they find out that the option makes the game easier, right? So you don't want anything that'll break, make or break the game for people. You just want it to be interesting enough if you want people to be able to choose the race they want to choose. You don't want to, like, uh, pigeonhole them into something. Oh, so... Oh, so the 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 other races, uh, the 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 other races uh, can't can't be underpowered, obviously, but it can't be overpowered either. Because... Yeah, you need trade offs that make the game kind of even out, right? And yeah. you, you can still have options that make things more difficult for people, but you can't really have options that make the game easier, right? Like you need 
because there are less people that want to play a more difficult version of the game than there are people who just want to play a normal version of the game, right? So instead mm. of putting those options to make the game more difficult in race, you might want to put those options in class instead, right? Like how oh. there's the, um, what, what's it called in some of the Souls games? Like it's like the, the burdened or the unburdened or something like that, where you get to opt into a harder version. You could do that. But you mm -hmm. want a normal standard version of gameplay for people, and that's why I think races should just be more off of trade-offs that even out, and then you can have a class that help uh, lets you choose that. Uh, so no one. So if you would were to make directly make a Mass Effect game where rate you can choose your race, no one want to be a, be a Quarian or or Volus. Um, well, I don't think it's no one, but they would definitely be less popular uh, species for sure. Uh, because you need a suit on all the time. Hey. Yeah, you just um, you just want to make people feel like their options are free, right? Okay, okay, so like maybe one of them. Uh, yeah, I can't remember the name of all the races, but if they let you be, let's say they let you play the races that have never really been playable, like that little kind of short, stout trading mole race, right? The, the Volus. That's, the Volus, that's right? Yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't remember all their names. Uh, but you you play the Volus, maybe because they're a trading species, you get money faster, but their combat abilities aren't as good, right? So that's but kind that, that of a trade-off. Yeah, you, sense, you could though. do stuff like that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. I have no idea, no idea what you guys are talking about, so I'm falling asleep. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Play Mass Effect. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I, I don't think Mass Effect is a game Marsupial would be that interested in, other than watching somebody <laughs> else do a playthrough. Yeah, I've, even, I have watched people play it. Even yeah, then, I got more because it. the gameplay wasn't that that good. That's that's the mess. That's made me kept me more through it. Well, the thing is, we don't even call it Mass Effect Four. You know, it, it, it's just Mass Effect Andromeda. Uh, yeah. Oh, by the way. So. Uh, was this what you started? Yeah, Mass Effect Five. So yeah, I found a, an article that says. Mass Effect 5 will probably not come out for another five years, and it will be on the PS6. <laughs> why, why is it uh, again? Like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Hyper-realistic graphics. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> like, seriously, now, you take it, like, take that many years to make graphics. I wouldn't want mm -hmm. Mass Effect to have hyper-realistic, because it really wasn't hyper-realistic before, even for its era. It was kind of stylized. It was just stylized closer to those Western proportions as opposed to how, like, Final Fantasy is trying to stylize to those Eastern proportions. Um, I, I would want it to just look like a more... Um, a higher fidelity version of the older games. I like the way, like, uh, Mass Effect 2 looked. I thought Mass Effect 2 looked really good. Uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, like, uh, yeah, like, I, I don't get, I don't get, I don't get it. Uh, especially since you can't, uh... Uh, especially since you can't, you, are you even allowed to stylize a game nowadays? Like, uh, yes, absolutely. Out? There's, the, you're, you're one hundred percent allowed to stylize games. There's a lot of people who no, do it. Add big, add big company, add big studio. Again, you can. They just don't. No, like you can't. Uh, it's self so Like, are you even allowed to use self shading anymore? Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, uh Tears of the Kingdom was. Basically, cell shaded. Yeah, but like, I don't think you will suffer lousy or, or um, or uh, my, most uh, games, uh, because Bandai Namco does a lot of licensed games, like a lot of anime games, right? Uh, most of their games are cell shaded, and stylized to look like the licensed property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, does Sony even allow that? Uh, although, to be fair, to be fair, I think a lot of games are just stuck recycling last of again. No, I, I think I mean, Sony would allow it. It's just so you also have to take an extra effort if you're using these engines, right? Like if you're making things in the Unreal Engine, which is already built for hyper realistic stuff, where you could just drag and drop like humans in the meta human thing into it. You'd actually be taking an extra step yeah. of effort to stylize it. And a lot of this is how can we get the highest fidelity game for the least amount of effort? Because they're already overspending on their games as it is. But where's the where's the money going? I'm confused. Uh, getting big Hollywood names to voice act in their game. Yeah, and gigantic teams that include people who just sit there and make, you know... Textures uh, and shit. Graphic textures yeah. all day, yeah. What, what, it's just what, a waste. It's like these movies where they're required to hire 
you know, 500 people for a movie that really should only require like 50. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Mm. That's, that's right. why, like, I like the Hoyo game so much, right? Um, e even if you're not yeah. interested in collecting waifus, which um, a lot the more <laughs> recent ones, you, you've got guys and stuff you can uh, use as well. And they give you enough free characters to play the game, but they're actually spending the time to make this highly stylized game that has fun mechanics, and they are a huge company that, oh my mm. god, actually that was something I wanted to bring up, uh, which we'll talk about in a second, is how much money they're making. The uh, the reports came out, and we finally have the Chinese mobile sales for those games as well, if you want to know just how much money those mm. companies are making. But um, they're making good games. Their studios are not bloated, right? They're big companies, but while they have like a thousand employees uh, across all of their things as opposed to like these other studios that are making the same amount of money that have thousands of employees at this point and have to work with multiple studios it's it's insane how mm -hmm. much budget gets wasted in modern video games hmm. for not as big so, of a return so wait 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 uh, I, 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 I might be giving my ideas but uh but they're probably not watching this but if 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 uh if ubisoft and um and with all these countries doing a lot of live service games on on mobile, yeah. like um like warner brothers if they actually made fan made wife you put white fuels in the game and have michael and have uh sell skins and stuff would, would, would those games actually sell better well it doesn't necessarily have to be waifus uh, especially a lot of people want their husbandos too, but it's more of just liking the character in general. But yes, service games where a character that people want, that you can drive up hype and attention for, where people can get skins and stuff for it, uh, would probably help sell their games. You're going to have to start getting away from gotcha as a mechanic as much as I, I like it. And that's because China is starting to put out regulations that get away from that stuff, especially when yeah. kids are involved specifically. But that doesn't mean you can't just sell skins to people, right? Uh, League of Legends have been doing it for years, and that's where they make most of their money, is scaling, uh, selling skins to people. Uh, you you well, also have to make if... the game fun, though, on top of that. It can't just be selling waifus and outfits for them. You have to have a fun game. That's just a way of making money on top of it. I mean, I mean, but... but... But the uh, I'm not sure if these phone games are fun. I mean, one is just one is just watching girls shoot guns. What 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 it must do? Are you talking about Nikkei? Uh, Nikkei, yeah, that game kind of mostly plays itself, and unless you get to the harder stuff where you actually have to control it, I've played enough Nikkei. I could kind of agree with you on that. That that game is borderline, uh, softcore porn. But uh, the story's actually pretty good, and it's it's actually the same uh, like development company that's making Stellar Blade. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but the thing is though, the thing is, why, why don't get is that uh, why don't Warner Bros. make a Catwoman game and they just sell sell outfits, for example? Uh, they did something similar to that. Bikinis. Catwoman was in the Arkham game, and you no, no, get no, no. Like, make, make make a full on Catwoman game and they just sell outfits or make a have a Gotham City sirens and then they don't do oh, that it. because women aren't allowed to be sexy in the West. But, and they just sell skins. At least in AAA studios, yeah. If you want, yeah. if you want the live service money, that's that's probably what they should do, right? Um, yeah, I guess, but Something they're just like not going to do it. I really have to go to the bathrooms. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I'll keep listening if you're going, but we're kind of near the end. But yeah, I'll yeah, right yeah. Um, we we went over. I did still want to cover some of this Hoyo stuff. I mean, I guess Fizz. I was going to kick you, but you're welcome to stay on since he's going to the bathroom. Um, uh, so, uh, if, if you're not... Well, it, it's mostly just about money. and We're not going into the games itself. Okay, uh, okay, okay but but, but yeah. what's up? Why are they obsessed with live service games? Yeah, yeah, not doing the stuff they sell. They're not doing the stuff they know will sell more. Sell more. I can't tell you why these people are insane, okay? I, it, it's just how it is. Yeah, it's, it's, if they if they knew how to make money, they would be making money. Like a, a, a Assassin's Creed creep at this point, because it's, it's no longer about Assassin's anyway. I mean, I, I mean, uh, the last couple games you were playing as warriors nonstop. Uh, uh, Assassin's Creed. Uh, the well, Assassin's Fizz, Creed we, we are out of time, and uh, I, oh. I I'm kind of done talking about that subject. So. Okay. Okay, bye. okay. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, you you can stick around if you want to. 
listen about this metrics thing, or or you could leave now. I I, I could kick you. It's up uh, to that, you. Yeah, I'll, I'll stick around. I won't, I won't okay. be, be talking that much. Okay, so we get the numbers from Sensor Tower every single month about what are the top selling mobile games. Like what what, what do they make? Uh, or top grossing, I guess, because you're not actually really selling these games. You're selling stuff in them. And finally, we have the Chinese numbers for these games. So, globally, I'll, I'll just look at the global sales. For the top 10, starting from the bottom up, you have Dragon Ball Z Dokken Battle, which is not doing as well as it did last uh, month. Then you have Puzzles and Dragons, Monster Strike, Fate Grand Order actually went up, Naruto Mobile, Ark Knights, uh, which I'm surprised is still doing well, probably just because the new game is coming out, so there's some hype for it. Uh, Uma Masume Pretty Derby, which is that one. I I don't get why people like it. It's it's girls running around a horse track. Um, Love and Deep Space, and then the top two, which have been kind of the reigning champions for a while. But it's nice to see uh, the Chinese numbers. Genshin Impact took a dive from 92.8 million to 68 million dollars, which is still nothing to laugh at. And Honkai Star Rail went up from 92.5 million to 145 million dollars in the month of March alone. Uh, what are the Indian numbers? Okay, do we have that? Um, I. I think India is global server numbers because they, they, they separate uh, basically Japan, China, and then everyone else. I don't know if India actually plays much of this or if we, we do or don't have the numbers. Oh, 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 because oh. uh, I know yeah. you got a lot of people in India, so I'm not sure. I think, I think, uh, I think Metal just answered your question about why so many studios are going to live service games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they're just not doing it right. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to get those numbers. And that also answers a good question because a lot of people have been saying like, um, Star Rail, Honkai Star Rail has been getting all the good stuff and, and Genshin Impact has been getting screwed. And I mean, you could call it a self-fulfilling prophecy, but those numbers kind of show why. I mean, they did well. They they beat Star Rail last month, right? Or like not last February. Yeah, that's Star true. Rail, right? A lot of it has yeah. to do with the banners, right? Like who is actually active right now? So the month before that, the, mm -hmm. there were some big banners that people were looking for in both games. But the end of March, and I think this was literally the last week of March alone was most of the sales for this, was when Acheron dropped. Uh, the uh, the huge the right in May who shows up in every single one of the Hoyo games. She's like the big favorite character yeah. drop. She's still going on now. I assume that there's going to be some cleanup money this month is probably going to do just as well. But most of the people like I want mm -hmm. her week one. That's that 145 million dollars. There was one guy. Oh, oh my god! I, th I think we talked about this last week uh, when Buck was on. He pulled 100 copies of her light cone just to support uh Acheron. And I'm like, you are insane. Like I don't know genuinely. what that means, but it sounds impressive. Well <laughs> just thinking about the amount of money um, that he would have dropped to buy a hundred copies. The light cone is basically her signature weapon, right? That you have to pull mm. also. Oh. And th oh. this is the only thing you can pull that much because you can't really pull past um seven copies of the character because there's six upgrades after the original mm -hmm. character. Um to have a hundred copies, that guy dropped Maybe a hundred thousand dollars, I would probably guess. I probably dropped a thousand hours into Puzzle and Dragons, but yeah, no, no money. <laughs> it made it on the list, it's in the top 10 right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard that. I was like, wow, yeah. Back in the day, I used to play so much Puzzle and Dragons, it's really addictive. I don't understand people though that can play thousands and thousands of hours over like years and years and years and decades like i have a friend who plays dota 2 to this day like obsessively yeah. and i'm like you've been playing that game for like 20 years stop <laughs> <laughs> or however long it's been around it's like definitely stop not playing been around for 20 years game. but it feels like it. For uh, 10 years something yeah. it's ridiculous uh, what, what, the, the, dota 2 is that that's a uh, um uh, uh, arena was that moba yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's like moba, league yeah. 
Right, uh, technically Dota was like, it wasn't the first big uh, battle arena, but it, it's the first one anybody knows the name of. It was a mod for Warcraft uh, 3, mm -hmm. and Dota 2 was a uh, license purchased by Valve so they could continue making it, and it's it's a Valve game now. Yeah. It's Valve's MOBA. I guess it's it's 11 years old, so yeah. I think my friend's been playing it for I mean, there's 10 people years. play League. I stopped playing League after 12 years, um, like a while back. Like I, You know when I uninstalled it? When Star Rail dropped. It was the last time that I, I played League. Uh, I've had no interest mm -hmm. in playing the game since then. They've, they've been killing everything I liked about the game for years. I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just, I, I've got all these Hoyo games. I'd rather drop my time in that than this stupid mobile battle arena that isn't getting any better. <laughs> I mean, I, I even dropped, you know, World of Warcraft after like two years. So, and that one's really yeah. addictive, I think. But at least these service games, right? Mm -hmm. I, I like these better than a, a lot of other ones because they are always adding content. Like, you know, years from now, there will still be new story, new like dungeons or stuff for you to do, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's kind of like watching an ongoing show. There's always going to be something yeah. new coming. Gun Girl Z, which is still supported from a story aspect. We just can't play it here in the West. They stopped supporting it in the West. Uh, you can't even download it. Mm -hmm. But um, the second Honkai game, after 11, uh, 10 years, is on version 11 point something. Like, they're, they're still updating that game with, like, new story and events. And if they're updating that game, uh, they're going to be updating Honkai Impact 3rd. They're going to be updating Genshin. They're going to be updating Star Rail. And it's like, cool, you know, at least it's functionally like still playing a new game years later because you still have more to do. There's a reason why people dump their money in this, right? It's not just because mm -hmm. the waifus are cool. It's like they know that they're they're not losing them anytime soon, which is a, an issue with service games, right? If you get something from WB, there's no point in spending money because it's going to be closed in a year. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um... But by the way, is, this, is Hoyo the only waifu game com company, or are there? Or no, there's plenty of them. Right, plenty of them. Uh, what, plenty what's of that them. one? We, what was that one? Was it Spider Man swinging around? Was that one? Oh, the one that hasn't come out yet. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it because that, that's one that looks really good in the cities. Ah, uh, frick. Ah, uh, what was the name of that? A new Spider Man game? No, no, no. no. It, it's a gotcha game around. where you're like anime women, but you actually. It's got Spider-Man-like mechanics. Yeah. Oh, God. I'm trying to remember. Is it Madam Webb, would... the movie, the game? No. no, no. It has nothing to do with Marvel at all. Uh... <sighs> <laughs> I'm, I'm upset that I'm blanking on it because we talked about it uh, back when the announcement got dropped, but it, it's probably not even coming out till the end of this year. Project something, mm. I think. Yeah, Project Mugen. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's the name. Of it. It's Project Mugen. When you just project, the rest of it jumped in my head. Uh, what, what company's making that? Well, what, uh, uh, that's ha, it's kind of new. It's like their first thing, or their first oh, big thing. Oh, oh, oh. Well, they made right. It for but you also have like um, Ark Knights is getting a sequel, so they're they're companies in that game, right? Um, the company oh, that Ark makes Nike. Ark Knights is like a tower ba or tower defense strategy game. You collect characters. Uh, you kind of put them in slots, and they take on waves and stuff. But the new one is going to play like Final Fantasy XII or like Xenoblade, uh, the Ark Knights 2, hmm. right? There's um, the Nikkei. Like I said, they're the same companies making Stellar Blade, uh, and they're branching off to other things. Uh, there's a lot of them, actually. You, you just have to be into it. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm not into it. I'm yeah. not into it. I'm not, like but, I said, once you once you make a monster collecting game, that that's when that's when I might start getting into that. I'm not uh, into there that. might be some out there. I don't know. Uh, you you have to look into it deep. There's there's too many of these games. But we are now almost 15 minutes over. I just really wanted to cover that. And it, mm -hmm. what do you have? You have something to say? No. Oh, oh I, just... I have one last thing. Okay. Uh, no, uh, World of Warcraft Season of Discovery uh, Season 3 is live today. Oh, hey, that's cool. So, so yeah. yeah you, you, I, I never got to level 40. To it, go, go and play it. Go go start start the <laughs> yeah. grind. Don't fall behind. I, I know. I need to get to level 50. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. So, do that. 
thanks for watching. If you enjoy the show, please share it out with other people. Get more people in here. Uh, grow the audience. We have a good time. Be prepared for our media show on Monday where we've got some interesting things to talk about, including Sandland. I'm going to make sure that I watch everything that's up to date. It was really sad that there was no new Urusei Yatsura this week. Um, I, I have been... I've been uh... Finishing up. Oh, there's a new se- there's a new episode of Delicious in Dungeon, by the way. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll watch that as well. You know. um, and if you really enjoy the show, consider giving a donation to streamlabscom vomitorium Live. Really helps me out specifically, uh, especially towards the uh, the snack and soda fund. And we will see you guys on Monday. See ya. Have a good weekend. <laughs>